Hey, welcome to a new episode of Josh's Car Corner. This time around, I'm going to be answering a fan question and showing how to do an oil change on the Tacoma. It's gotten to that point. I've had it for about 4,000 miles now, and the oil was changed when I bought the truck, but I have no idea what they put in here. I have no idea what filter this is, so it's time to change it up, and the temperatures are going up. We're getting into the 90s every single day, so I need to put some better oil in here anyway. But while I'm doing that, I thought I would take this opportunity to answer some questions about synthetic oil. I kind of got the inspiration when I was in O'Reilly's picking up oil for this thing. Now, a lot of people look and see that the oil they purchase for their car is a synthetic oil or a full synthetic, but what does that really mean? And are all synthetic oils the same? And the truth is there are actually differences between them all. So while I'm doing the oil change on this thing, I thought I would cover the differences in them and you can hopefully learn a little bit of information as to what the differences in the oils are and what oils you should be running in your own engine. So let's get under the truck and one thing I love about this truck is how user-friendly it is when it comes to working on it. And you're going to see that right now when we get to taking the oil out. Okay, so I'm under the truck right now. First thing I like is that you don't even need a jack to get under this thing with the factory ride height. So first thing we want to look at is under here. They actually left a cutout in the factory skid plate so you can get to the oil drain pan. And look at the drain plug. It's vertical. So that means you don't have to worry about the oil coming out at a goofy angle and then tapering off as the oil level gets low. You just got to put your pan right under the hole and it's all going to drain out perfectly. It's a 14 millimeter bolt. We'll get that backed out and get the oil drained out. Okay, so I got the oil drain out of the pan. Here's the second thing I love about the Toyota. This is where they put the oil filter up on top of the engine. And you might think, well, that's a stupid place to put it. That's going to make a giant mess all over everything. Ah, they add this little aluminum tray right around the bottom here. And it's got a little hole cut in the bottom of it. And there's a little stem comes off it. So you just go to the parts store, get about three or four foot of fuel line hose. And you might be able to see that attached to it. Run that all the way down to your drain pan, and your oil drains right in. It doesn't make a mess. How cool an idea is that? This is even cooler than having the oil filter on the bottom of the engine, because it can still drain and make a mess. <clears throat> and it seems the previous technician put that on a little tight. So I'm going to have to get some tools and manhandle it off. Okay, that's loose now. So let's get that loosened up and we can but we can watch right here the oil start to run into that little relief valve. Oh, nothing's come out yet. Okay. So this also tells me this was entirely the wrong filter for this engine because it doesn't have an anti-drain back valve. That's why nothing came out. So this has actually been harming my engine the entire time it's been in here because all the oil's been draining out of it when the engine shuts off and running back down to, to the pan. So there's been no oil pressure in the engine when this thing gets started in the morning. So that's been hurting my engine and now I'm actually quite upset at whoever put this thing on here. But we're going to fix that now with a proper oil filter and a little explanation of how synthetic oils work. So when it comes to synthetic oils, you might be surprised to find that there are a lot of differences between them. And the first thing that you want to know is there's actually three different classes of synthetic oil. Group 3, Group 4, and Group 5. Now how to break these classes down. Group 3s are classified as synthetic oils, but they're actually made from crude oil. And they're made by a process of pressurizing them at great temperature and breaking hydrogen particles out of them and changing the properties of the oil to the point where they actually operate like synthetic oils are classified to operate. But they're made from crude oil, so they're mineral-based oils. There's actually a big lawsuit that happened a few years ago where Mobil actually sued in the United States Supreme Court to get their synthetic Mobil One oil classified as a full synthetic oil. Because it's made from crude oil, the law initially said that it couldn't be classified as a full synthetic oil because it's made from crude oil. By taking it to the court, paying the right people off, I imagine, and demonstrating that their oils work just as well as a full synthetic oil, they got them classified as synthetic oils. But they are listed as group three. So things like Mobile One, Castrol Edge, other ones by the, manu by the big national manufacturers, Pennzoil, whatever, they are group three synthetic oils. So they're classified as synthetics, but they're made with crude oil. 
doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with them. They work just fine. As a matter of fact, I still run Mobile One in the GTO and have done ever since I bought it. It was good enough for GM, it's good enough for me. Getting beyond that, you get into the synthetic oils that are actually made of synthetic materials. There's the Group 4 oils, which are made, and I want to pronounce this right, out of polyalpha olefins. And it is a synthetic particle, and it is comprised of, I don't know what, to get to polyalpha olefin, but it is a full synthetic oil that is manufactured and produced from synthetic materials. Now, getting beyond that is the Group 5s. Those are the ones that are ester-based oils. And ester-based oils are supposed to be the most resilient to temperature, friction, uh, picking up lubricants, and handling extreme conditions better than anything else. Now, the only Group 5 that I know of that you can buy in the United States is made by Redline. Most of the other ones are Group 4s, your AMS oils, your Royal Purples, and then the stuff that you can normally buy at your auto parts stores, your mobile ones, your edges, those are your group threes. So when it came time to put oil in this thing, I decided I wanted to go with a synthetic just because it gets so hot here and we have much more temperature extremes and we have more impurities in the air with all the dust. So I was going to just go to my old standby and get mobile one or maybe castor allergy or something to the like of it. And then I was in the store and my local auto parts store had the Royal Purple on special for a dollar less a bottle. So I said, you know what? I'll give it a go one time. I've never used Royal Purple before. I can't imagine I'm going to see a difference in performance, but it is a true full synthetic oil made of the polyalpha olefins and not a crude based synthetic. So I'll run it in this thing and hopefully have a longer oil change interval. And I'm also going to put on a proper oil filter this time. I got myself the mobile one and for the guy out here who wanted to see the oil change video let me explain that i did some more research on this too the three best oil filters you can get for the tacoma engine especially or at least the v6 engine are the factory yzzd31 the napa gold 1516 filter or the one i have here the mobile one m1209 they are the best because they have the biggest amount of filter material and the correct anti-drain back valve to work with this system so oil stays in the filter so when you go to start your truck in the morning it has oil and gets pressure to everything right away. And there was an extensive test done on Tacoma World by one of the forum members there. He tore apart every single filter you can get for one of these trucks and looked at them in detail as to how big the filter material was, whether or not they had a good anti-drain back valve, how well were they built? Were they easy to get apart? Were they glued together and put together pretty well? And he found that these are the three best based on filter content. Toyota's the best, the Napa Gold has the second most, this has the third most. So you can get the factory Toyota filter. Uh, you can get it on Amazon too if you don't have a local nearby dealer. And you can order them in bulk too at a discount. Uh, the other reason you'd want to go with one of these is they are the three biggest filters. The Toyota is the smallest one of the three and the mobile and the Napa are pretty much the same size. So if you want a little extra filter capacity, and you would with a truck, the other advantage is with a longer filter body, this has got a fan right here, um, a clutch driven fan. It doesn't have electric fans and you'd be sucking air right through onto the engine and it's gonna run around this oil filter too for a little extra cooling. Okay, so on this one, I did use my trick of filling the filter up with oil so it would already be pre-filled to a certain degree and have some pressure faster than just putting it in there dry. However, I only filled it once because I knew it wasn't all going to absorb into the filter material and it was full and now there is a little bit at the bottom there. I don't know if you can see it. So I'm expecting a little bit to spill here, but that's okay because I got the hose there. I'm just going to try to get this thing on quick. And lost a little bit, but not too bad. And as I said before, you don't have to gun these things on really tight. They just need to be snug because they are going to tighten up over time. Okay, well the oil has been changed successfully. The one comment I can make about the Royal Purple right off the bat is that it is really hard to see on the dipstick because it is so clear. I know it looks purple in the bottle and it looks purple when you pour out, but once it gets on that dipstick, it's transparent. So you got to look for that really shiny film, but it's there and everything looks good. And uh, one thing I'm noticing right away with the proper oil filter on there with the anti drain back valve is the oil pressure light isn't staying on for a second or two once I start the engine now. 
Hey, one more thing I want to mention. I've decided I'm going to do my first fan live chat on the show. It's going to be a live YouTube web chat that's going to be taking place Tuesday, April 17th at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Pacific. I'm going to go for about an hour, and I'm going to basically answer questions you guys have of me. So if you've always wanted to ask me something, get on at that time, ask me questions. Um, I'd love to get a discussion going about things if you have some questions. I might learn something from you, you might learn something from me, and let's just get a general chat going about GTOs, Holdens, LS cars, Toyota pickups, whatever you want to talk about. And that's going to be Tuesday, April 17th, so look for that. See you next time.